I'm about to reach 8,000 days in hardcore Minecraft, which means we're 80% of the way to day 10,000, which is when I'll jump in the void and end the series. And in my world, I have a diamond beacon, which is broken. I have a netherite beacon, which is broken. My mob collection, broken. My end hub, broken. The teleporter, broken. And all these other things are either unfinished or broken. So today I'm gonna fix everything. And it all begins by capturing a new warden. Last time I did this, I almost died and used up way too many totems. So this time I have a new plan. And that is to build a warden transporter. All it requires to build is redstone, note blocks, pressure plates, and walls. And thankfully, I have got plenty of all of them. And next I'm going to fly up here and go along this blue ice highway to the place where I built the Warden Disabler. It's just some arrows right here that keep activating a shrieker and a warden tries to spawn but it's all spawn proofed. Next I'm going to go to a nearby place where I know I can find skulk shriekers. And so this is the area of my block collection. And if I dig out of it, you can see that we're actually in a massive ancient city. And this was so that I could have reinforced deep slate in my block collection. And apparently there's diamonds, don't mind if I do. Next I'm going to dig out an area around this shrieker. Which means this wall right here is, has got to go. Right here there's going to be a portal. And then one that links up to it above the nether. And I can actually remove this portal now because I'm going to rebuild it later. And this next bit is probably going to be the trickiest. I need to block up this side, add a pressure plate right here, and then absolutely loads of walls all the way to where I'm transporting the warden to. That's one side done, and the other side as well. Now in order to lure the warden along, we're going to use note blocks. Every time it steps on the pressure plate, it activates the note block, and it will run to the next pressure plate, and keep on going forward. I've placed down a massive row of pressure plates, and now I'm going to add in all the note blocks. Next I can hook it up with redstone dust, and that means a section of the machine is now complete. But it will take the warden ages to walk all the way along here. And so now I'm going to start phase two of the machine, which is to make the warden angry. Because once he stands on this pressure plate, a piston will extend. And that will trap the warden from going backwards. From there, I'll make the warden angry and he can chase me all the way along until he gets to the end. And something else that I've noticed is the warden that was in here just kept killing the panda over and over. So this is no longer going to be the warden's home. And instead, he's going to go right here. And it is now complete. If you ask me, it looks quite sinister and quite spooky. And tell you guys about the brand new poster I'm releasing for 8,000 days. Here it is. It looks pretty epic. It shows me getting bedrock, controlling lightning, doing a netherite farm, building factories. And I've signed every single one of them by hand. Here I am in the merch office and you can get them framed as well if you want to. I worked really hard on this so I hope that you guys like them and they're available on sp737.store. There won't be many new posters released after this one so don't miss your chance. And this is the portal that the warden's gonna go through to end up in here. The walls will connect up nicely, the pressure plate will stop him from being able to go backwards and the portal will send him into the cage. I'm going to stock up my inventory on totems, just in case anything goes wrong. And then it is time to do this. I'm going to successfully trap the warden without any mishaps. First things first, I turn on hitboxes. And then I keep activating a shrieker until the warden spawns. And this is where I have to act fast. I trap him with wool, like so, and I'm going to name tag him. Next, I must build a portal. Now, right now, he can smell me, so I have to be careful about that. There we go, he's angry at me now, so now I move away. Just gotta let him calm down, and then I can finish the portal, break the blocks, and light it. Now, once they enter through here, that's when things are gonna get dangerous. There is my warden. And once he walks onto the pressure plate, he's gonna head for the note block. And just look at him go, he keeps standing on the pressure plates and heading for the next note block. And he's about to walk through the door. There we go, he's now trapped. It's time for the fun part. I'm gonna make him angry. Hello, good sir. Get punched in the face, Mr. Angry Man. And now he is gonna chase me. I, I'd better get a move on, though, because he's a, he's a little bit faster than I'd like. I can just about see him in the background. And somehow, the plan is working absolutely perfectly. Here he comes. Uh, okay, just go through the portal. It looks like he did. The door worked. All I know is I must not go through that. That would be a disaster. And in theory, when I head down here... We should have a warden. And then I can break this portal and add in the glass. And that is the first of the quests off the list. So next I can repair all of my items. And now I'm going to move on to the next project, which is to trap a camel and trap a sniffer. Now these are both going to go exactly where the warden was. The camel 
can be right here. And then the sniffer right next to it. And for the camel, I'm thinking of a combination of cyan wool, sandstone, and lime wool. And then red and green for the sniffer, because that kind of matches what the egg looks like. Thankfully for both of these mobs, I don't really need to travel far because I've got a bunch of snippers right here and I can probably breed an extra one like so and then take one of the adults to its new home. In you go. We can put this on the front. And now to go and see my friends, the camels. Because once again, I have a massive home for them. This is a camel sanctuary. It's a bit grander than what I gave the sniffers. This guy is loving life up there, apparently. He just keeps twirling around. What's going on? But yeah, there's so many camels in here. So I'll just take this one over here. I will have to break down the door slightly to get him out. And he is also into... His new home. That's it. You rest your aching legs. I've no idea where I'm going to add the armadillo and the breeze mod when they get added, but we'll worry about that later. I also got this sniffer egg from Hatchland before, so I might as well get it placed down there. And I need to repair this door that I broke. I can patch this up with a bit of glowstone with quartz slabs up here. And then this also needs fixing. And the pixel art on the floor can also be sorted. That's the drowned looking like normal again. This wither face also needs sorting. And finally, a few of them over here need to be fixed. And there we go. Another room is repaired. And I'll now focus my efforts on sorting this area down here out, which means going out in search of an Elder Guardian. A monument has been found up ahead. So before I get closer and get mining fatigue, I'm going to make sure I have every needed item to get the Guardian in the nether. In fact, let's grab some milk as well because we're on a mushroom island. So there's going to be mushrooms around here. Mushrooms that will give me infinite milk. And now the plan is simple. I dig down, build a portal and keep drinking milk to get rid of the fatigue. Then I simply remove all of the water by placing cobblestone. Could have used sponge, but okay, well, we've got mining fatigue. Again. Yeah, I could have used sponge, but I, I, I didn't really need to, did I? Next in theory, yep, I can light it. And before I leave, I, well, I get sent through, I will leave. And I do need this guy to enter, but I probably have to get the portal ready on the other side first, which means breaking this one and going above the nether to build another one. One of these minecarts should, in theory, pick him up. And if that all goes to plan, I should be able to transport him home. But I should probably just focus on trying to get him in the portal first. All right, okay, never mind. That was, um, that was surprisingly very easy, barely an inconvenience. And now I can head through and, and he's in a minecart. Okay, that was also very easy. The track is going to be built in this direction and then go that way. At this point, I feel like I'm a bit of an expert at transporting guardians. And before I can transfer him across, I need to repair the wither cage and also the elder guardian's home. Which shouldn't be too tricky, but I do just need to grab a few different materials. And one of those materials is glowstone, something I've, I've completely run out of. Shouldn't be too much of a problem though, because it's something that I can easily trade for at the Void Trader. And now I can quickly make the needed repairs, which does also include putting the iron golem back that died, which is what caused the wither to be able to escape. And this time I'm gonna be extra safe and have two of them in case one dies, I've got another one ready and waiting. And for the rest of this, it's just a case of placing a load of blocks to fix everything. For the Wither's actual cage, I'm going to create something a little bit stronger than the glass that I've used before. Because a few months ago, I built a farm that lets me get unlimited bedrock. So I'm going to use some of it to make a much stronger cage for the Wither. So the way it will work is it's going to be bedrock below this stone cutter. And then there's going to be bedrock on each side as well. This will stop the wither from being able to move to the side. And it won't be able to blow this bedrock up. And then it's the exact same thing up here. The stone cutter and the grindstone will just hold it in place so that it'll shoot the iron golems on the other side. But even if it breaks them through an explosion, it won't be able to escape and cause all the destruction that it did last time. So let's begin by summoning this guy in. Then I need to add water above it and I need to get out of here before the explosion occurs. You'll see it shouldn't break anything because of the water. There we go. And the skulls are trying to attack the wardens, but they are just getting flung up by the water. Then I must just carefully remove the water, put back the glass, and we've done it. And as you can see from the wither's hitbox, it physically cannot get out of this column because it cannot move up and down or break the bedrock, which is why it's permanently trapped and won't be able to cause the same destruction as before. And now to do the needed repairs on the Elder Guardian's home, which thankfully is quite a bit easier. Next, I'm going to build a little portal right here, which in theory is where the Elder Guardian's going to come through, if, if everything goes to plan, that is. I'm also going to plant down a bit more kelp around. And the real question is, does this portal connect up to it? It. Yep, indeed it does. I'll also get busy repairing all of these walls that got ruined. Look at this, loads and loads of destruction, but it, it can all be easily fixed. And with that activator rail right here, I think I'm now ready to send this guy off. 
And away he goes. He just got the mining fatigue in at the last second. Of course he did. But yeah, the minecart track is pretty standard and, and pretty simple. He goes over the little bridge, round the bend, and once he gets to the activator rail, he's ejected and gone through. And if everything has gone to plan, we've got an elder card in. So, so close to being in the water. Come on, get in there. I'll even push it in. Oh, are you in the minecart still? There we go. Oh, God, I just sent him back. No. I know I couldn't get through an entire video without there being at least one mishap. But now I have an elder guardian in the nether to deal with. Nice to contain him into this base. He's in the minecart. He's going down there. He's gone in the portal. This time I'm going to break said portal. And he's in. And down here is now fully complete. I just need to get a brand new brown panda for this slot, which I can get from down here and my collection of every single mob in minecraft is now fully fixed and complete and now for the next of my projects i need to fix my netherite beacon it's missing a grand total of 45 blocks which is roughly 23 stacks of ancient debris but don't worry because a few episodes ago i built a netherite farm and this farm allows me to find and collect ancient debris at super fast speeds. And I've already ransacked the majority of it. However, if I go 3,000 blocks in this direction, you'll see that there's still plenty more ancient debris to be collected. Will I be able to get the 23 stacks that I need? I I'm not sure. But it has revealed a serious amount of them, so I'm remaining optimistic. And that is stack number one, which means there's just 23 to go. And I've also realized it's probably quite a bit faster if I use scaffolding to get up to the ancient debris because then I can be placing it as I'm climbing. When I'm done, I can just swoop on down, break the bottom and do it all over again. And with that, I've reached stack number two, as well as the third one, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, eighth, ninth and tenth. Which means we're halfway there. Look at this, that's 15 stacks obtained and now 20. We're starting to get very, very close. At this point, I've now reached 25 stacks, which is more than I need. And okay, well, don't get hit by uh, lava recipe. But yeah, whilst it is more than I need, I am now at the end of the tunnel. So I might as well just keep going till the very end and see what I finish up with. And the issue with walking into lava is you do end up having to eat quite a lot of food. And that is that. All this ancient debris has been obtained. And now I can make the long flight back home and set all of this ancient debris off smelting. And whilst I wait, the other thing I'm going to need to go with it is a lot of gold. And gold is something I have a little bit of. Do I have enough? I need 23 stacks. Yeah, no, nowhere near. So I'll place this shulker box here and feed the hoppers into it so that it fills up. Then I'll drop down this hole to set this chunk loader off. A chunk loader which was apparently broken because it was connecting to this portal. Let's, uh, let's try that again. Nah, there's too many portals in my world. It, it's definitely broken. We'll just have to leave it. And instead, I'll fly to the gold farm. Let that get me loads of ingots and I can be busy crafting as all of the gold funnels in. And once I turn all of these to ingots, I'll have enough. Still a little bit of time left on all of this to be fully smelted, but whilst I wait, I can be making the ingots, which is such a satisfying thing to do. Next, I can make all the blocks, so I'm just too short, but there's still more netherite scrap coming through, don't worry. That's every single block. And now for the satisfying part where I can place them all down. And once again, have a full netherite beacon. Although this does make the diamond one look very sad, we should probably fix that too. And fix it I shall. Thanks to all the different diamond farms I have, it shouldn't be too tricky. So I'll make some preparations and then get ready to start that project. This is the Infinibor that I built. As you can see, it's a massive machine. It's very, very powerful. And it's very, very useful because it blew up a hole for me that is tens of thousands of blocks long. And I'm going to use it again, but this time, instead of extending the tunnel longer than it already is, because that would just make the machine take... I don't know, hours and hours of real life time. Instead, I'm going to make it so that it blows up a layer lower so I can get all the diamonds down here. It will mean that I'll have a little bit more lava to contend with, but the spawn chance of diamonds is higher when you're lower down in the world. I mean, look at this already. I'm seeing quite a few diamonds that I missed. Now, in order to lower it, I need to remove all these pieces of glass and change it so that they're all one block lower. Getting rid of them all is kind of going to be annoying. I'm going to have to kind of jump between each one, making sure that I don't break any of these trip wires, otherwise it will be a disaster. And that's every single piece of glass removed. Now if I grab a bunch of temporary blocks, I can place down all of these. And that's all of that sorted. And so next, I need to make it so that these vines are all the way fully grown, which I, I, you know, I could just wait for them to grow or I could add temporary dirt blocks and place the vines on the front. The hardest part is done because that is all of the dirt placed down, which means now I only need to place all of the vines. 
and I found a pretty nice way of doing it because every time I go down, I just do a little vine clutch and I'm taking no fall damage. It looks okay, I took some there. But generally speaking, it looks pretty elegant. And with that all done, I now just need to remove all of the dirt. And now, the modified version of my Infinibore is ready. Before activating it, I will just nip home to drop off all of these items and to repair my elytra. And with that, there's nothing more I can do. Let's land right here, put 10 nuggets into this dropper and fly to this platform. And in the meantime, the Infinibore will be working. The machine has now finished running, and so it is now time for me to see if it worked. And by the looks of things, the plan was a massive success because we have loads of new diamonds on the ground. Plus diamond ores in the floor. I've lowered the render distance and I'm going to go back and forth, chunk by chunk and row by row, collecting up every single diamond that I see. Whilst also being careful to make sure I spot the ores that are in the floor. I've already reached my first stack and there's still thousands of blocks to go. But I'll just get busy and keep collecting. And with that, I have a grand total of 100 diamonds. And now I've got 200 and we're on day 8,000. That's, that's pretty awesome, isn't it? Another milestone in hardcore Minecraft checked off the list. 300 diamonds have now also been obtained and now make that 400 and yes i have gone a little bit over time but i can't end this video until that diamond beacon is fully repaired 500 diamonds means i'm a third of the way to a full beacon and now i've reached the end of the tunnel that i've made with a grand total of 980 diamonds plus a ridiculous amount of diamond ore they seem to be much easier to find at this lower level because i have so so many of them and so now i'm going to fly all the way back and use a load of this diamond ore to repair this pathway will i have enough i don't know but i am optimistic and we will soon find out. Perfect. I've successfully replenished all of it. And doesn't it look great? I'm so glad it's fixed. And then I can grab a load of buttons and spawn proof the entire pathway. And there we go. That should be more than enough. And now for the moment of truth, how many diamond blocks have we got? And will we end up having enough? At this point, I'm going to have to mine up all the diamond doors. And that gets me another 31 blocks, which is still not quite enough. But don't worry, because I do happen to have another massive diamond farm. So I'll go ahead and start using it. Just watch all the TNT blow up. And then I'll see how many diamonds I can get. At this point, I think I now have enough. And now I can finally fix the diamond beacon in my world. And that is another of the projects complete. Now, one of the things that I also said needs repairing is quite a big build. Yes, because it's my end hub. The issue that happened here, first of all, was that I had some rogue dragons that flew around and, and broke stuff like the tower that's meant to be in the middle here. And when I made the bedrock farm in 1.12, these chunks regenerated to end stone. So I have to remove all of this. That's probably going to be the hardest part. because I'll have to get busy mining to make sure every single piece is gone. But... I have a way to speed things up a little bit. I'm not going to use TNT because that'll end up destroying loads of other stuff. No, instead, I shall build a beacon. Technically, I've already built a full netherite beacon, a full diamond one, and I'm about to build a full iron one, even though I've, I've got loads of them already. But it does seem to be a bit of a recurring theme throughout this video, doesn't it? Me building beacons. Anyway, that aside, I can put this on top. I can do this and get haste too, which will really help speed things up in how fast I can mine away at this endstone island. Because when I'm mining this much endstone, we're talking in thousands, probably tens of thousands of endstone. Saving that fraction of a second per block because of the haste too really will add up over time. So look at this. Oh, I'm, I'm motoring away. This is fantastic. As you can see, there's a lot of layers for me to get through. So I'm going to get very, very busy mining away. And that is the first layer completely mined away, which means there's just about 20 more to go. This is quite the project. I've knocked quite a few layers off from here and I've had to keep using my skulk to repair my pickaxe as there really is a lot of blocks to mine but we're, we're making good progress i'm past halfway with mining everything up as you can see and it's it's definitely taken a lot of mining but my pickaxe is nearly broke and i have run how to skulk to repair it. Thankfully, however, and, and I don't know why I didn't use this earlier, I have an XP Enderman farm that I can use to get everything I need to repair the pick and continue with the massive mining project. And I am now getting so, so close, as you can see, to being done. The layers are getting smaller and smaller. And that means a lot of the blocks I'm now mining are over the void. And I definitely think this part of the project is probably the hardest and most time-consuming bit. Building it and repairing it all should, should really not take that long. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 
We are on the final. Well, we're pretty much on the final layer. There's a few blocks underneath, but they, they don't count. In fact, if I mine them away like this, now we are. Oh, oh now <laughs> we are on the final layer. And unfortunately, because I'm so far down, I'm not even getting the haste effect from the beacon, which is annoying because it's really slowing down the mining process. Thankfully, I've only just lost the haste. And if I fly upwards for a little bit and go back down, I can use it for another 15 seconds. And there we have it. Mission accomplished. Doesn't it look much much better. And I can also mine up the entire beacon. However, there is one unfortunate side effect of breaking it over the void, and that is that most of the blocks are, are going to be lost. Not really an issue because I have an iron farm that's always working, getting me loads of it. So I'm not going to complain. I could have ended up collecting a lot more endstone, but I feel like I've already got plenty of it anyway. But we, you know, we've got, we've got a decent amount to add to the collection. And now I'm going to grab the materials I need to fix this. One of them is going to be yellow concrete. Although it is going to need to be a bit more than what I just pulled out of that chest. So let's go and craft some and convert it. And with that sorted, I can begin repairing this entire yellow concrete pathway that goes round the outside. And I did have a little bit of a worry that I was going to run out of obsidian as I repaired this, but it looks like we have got just about enough, as you can see. In fact, we've probably got a, about 30 pieces to spare. And now for the next part of this that's going to be repaired, I'm going to need stone slabs. These slabs will go along here like so. Connected to the slabs is going to be glass. And as you can see, it's going to have this effect all the way up. It was just a lot easier to build it starting from the bottom rather than trying to go downwards. Like, yeah, that was... Uh, that was going to be too much hard work. And I am going to end up needing more obsidian to repair stuff like that and, and that over there. But we're just 42 pieces. And as far as I'm aware, I've got none left at home. The only other bits of obsidian I do have are what's in this ender chest. So you can see quite a lot, probably enough for the project, but I have another plan. At some point, make a new obsidian farm down there, but that, that's not going to happen at the moment. Instead, I can admire the 8,000 days posters. It, it might just be one of my favorite ones. I really, really like the effect. It's, it's quite different to the others. Anyway, let's not get distracted from the main plan. I unfortunately used up all my obsidian on this massive hoglin farm, which is insane. It gets me so much leather and so much food. But now whenever I need obsidian, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit short on it. So instead, I'm going to try the bartering farm because piglins drop obsidian and i don't think i've ever collected the obsidian from them in the massive sorting system i do have a chest that does pick it up as you can see all the way at the end moment of truth have we got much you know what that's a great amount that's fantastic actually i didn't expect it to be that much it's uh, i've got loads of crying obsidian as well wow that's fantastic that probably gets me out of a bit of trouble and means i am going to be able to continue this build and fix my end hub i'm also going to need quite a bit of magenta glass to finish off the build as well not really got that much though but at least regarding the purple stained glass that i'll need i've got plenty and it's also very cheap to craft all the glass as well so i'll start by copying these little rings that you see all the way around here and slowly add bigger and bigger ones as i get higher and that is about as much as i can do without going and getting the blocks needed now for the main bulk of the island. There's about 29 different types, and I've written a list which contains each one. And I'm going to need shulker boxes to make sure I can hold all of the items. Just got to turn these into stairs, and I now have every single item, or I have the ability to make every single item with the stone cutter, which is why I'm bringing it. So first things first, I can start with these slabs and then put the smooth stone on top, followed by andesite and also sea lanterns. The platform's now starting to take shape, and I just need to get a bit more stone down to cover up the gaps below. And then I can continue with the next layer, which is going to be grey wool. Next is obsidian on top. And you can see I'm just kind of following the pattern of the rest of the platform, which is kind of handy when you have half of it missing, isn't it? Because it means I've got to do a lot less thinking for myself. And now for another two layers of grey concrete, which leads me to this level where I can start to fill in the floor. And with the floor now done, I'm not going to finish this building and fix it. Instead, I'm going to work on the platforms next to it and get those finished. It's definitely getting there. I'm just adding decorations onto this pathway. And as you can see, I've connected everywhere up as well. So now the pathways are in, the pathways are in there. And really all it leaves for the bit that was destroyed by the end regenerating is for me to do that building, which has a quarter missing, and that one, which has pretty much half of it gone. So I'll pretty much just do it up layer by layer. And the good thing is, it's it's pretty easy to see what needs to be done because it's, it's fairly symmetrical and it's fairly... Well, it's exactly the same as that one over there. So I don't really have to remember anything. Instead, I just need to keep building it up. And with that, this building is fixed and it's looking pretty good. So now it's time for the bigger project, which is to fix this one and this building is now also completely fixed and that means the main bulk of this end hub is repaired but you can see up here is also kind of broken so that's the next thing i'm gonna do get this platform up here 
nicely fixed. Well, that is assuming that I have enough concrete to do that. I am starting to run out after this. I am on my last stack. It looks like going home for a quick restock is going to be necessary. There we go. All of that should definitely do it. I'm pretty much just repeating what I did before to change it from powder to concrete. There we go. And now this floating platform can properly be fixed. There we go. And just fixing that platform really does make the entire end hub look so much better. I know it's not exactly how it was before because there was a big tube and decorations around. But for me, this end hub is in a pretty good position where it looks like it's fixed. You know, when you're walking around it, it doesn't look anywhere near as broken as it used to, which is kind of my goal. Yes, there are little bits here and there, which I, I do need to repair. And I do need to actually build these cages, which I've, I've never actually done. I still don't know what to put inside them. But the reason I'm not going to do all of it in this episode is because I want to add some extra farms into the end, into this hub. Like there's going to be some, some farms here. And I want to add them and then build around them and fix it. If I, if I fix it all and then have to break it to add the farm, and that's just counterproductive. So that's my thinking behind only fixing some of the stuff. Plus, I'm way past 8,000 days. I don't want to spend too long on the end up. And there are still one or two other things that I'd like to fix in this episode before it's over. And I'd say the main one is this melon and pumpkin farm because it, it used to work really well. But yeah, right now, it, it is just a bit broken. So let's sort it out. I think placing a chest here, yeah, will send everything back to the beginning, which is a good start. It's going to break loads of melons, but I haven't got anything here to pick them up. So that needs solving. And the way I'll do that is by coming here to grab iron. How much iron have we got, by the way? I should turn some of it into blocks, shouldn't I? Oh, this entire thing is just full. Full to the brim. Why is the chickens up there? So many questions. Anyway, let's let's just <laughs> let's just craft some, some into blocks, and then at least we have a little bit more space. And then I can go ahead and craft a few hopper minecarts. So I'm making six of each, and then one by one, I can make them. Next, I'm going to need rails. You'd think I'd need to go home to get rails, but as you can see, I've got some lying around. I, this really doesn't need to be here. Maybe this should be destroyed sometime. In, in an episode where I'm fixing everything, it would make sense to destroy it, but I'll just, I reckon I could spend a thousand days on sorting things out in this world, couldn't I? There really is a ridiculous amount of stuff that can be done. Now, we do have an issue that over here, we seem to be missing a slime block. I'm not sure why or, or where I nicked it from. All I know is that it must have been from somewhere. Also, as you can see, the machine has taken it upon itself to set off. <laughs> so I am going to take this opportunity to place down the hopper minecarts by doing this, picking it back out, and it's just rinse and repeat with all six of them until they're all placed. And then I just need to see if I can steal a slime block from anywhere. Is there any unused machines to... to that I could take one from. At first glance, it doesn't seem like it, but this machine has broken, so I could just steal the slime block from there and then go home and get another one, if it makes sense. So it, it doesn't really... <laughs> it was kind of a waste of time. The only reason I've done it this way is because then I can have that on and I can place this iron bar here and it should pick it up, all being well. Look at that. And then when they get to the hopper minecarts, they should pull them along. And there we go. This bit is now fixed. Fantastic. And I'm going to flick this down so that it stays fixed as well. And now for the next part, to head all the way back home and grab that one singular slime block that I need. And that can be added to here. And if I just work my way across... Okay, did I not turn off this machine? How are you moving by yourself again? I'm sure I flicked the lever that stops that. I did, but it must be able to do one more iteration. Let's flick this lever down ahead of time, so then that's not an issue. And then back to what I was doing, making this move. There we go, we did it. But it's also missing the hopper minecart, so if I'm really quick... I might be able to fly all the way over here. And I mean really, really quick, actually. Look at the speed that it's coming. But yeah, I'm going to craft them all, which I've just about managed to do. And then we go rail, hopper minecart, break it, and repeat that a load of times. I actually think there's, there's a slight chance that I might just pull it off. Or I might, uh, well, maybe not quite. I, I don't think for all of them anyway. But four out of six isn't bad. Is, is it just put these in the hopper? Thankfully not. <laughs> and next time the machine sets off, it will pick up these ones as well. So that will be fixed. Although I'll tell you what won't be fixed. All of the farmland that needs tilling and then seeds added into it. This section actually isn't too bad for it. But this part is terrible. It's just this edge along here that needs tilling and then the seeds planting. And then this pumpkin and melon farm is as good as new. And it's technically actually a bone meal farm because these hoppers have composters underneath that will be creating bone meal and they flow through here and into the tree farm. So yeah, all in all, I'd say it's a pretty good system. It's just this one on the end that is the actual pumpkin farm. As you can see, there's pumpkins galore along there and then they 
go into these two chests. I'll also get this bamboo farm fixed and running again. I think I can do that just by maybe breaking this. Nope, that didn't work. What about by breaking this? Okay, N neither. <laughs> I thought a block update might get it moving, but apparently not. Instead, I'm going to have to actually mine things up and move them across like that. I believe that should fix it now. Yep, there you go. You can see it's moving again. It's taking out all of the bamboo. And it's loading it into this chest down here, which as you can see is, is pretty full, but I have got shulker boxes, which I can fill up so that I have a bit more space in the chest. Same thing with the sugarcane farm. Let's also fix that and set it off. And you know what? I think I'm pretty happy with what I've achieved in this video. Is my world completely perfect? Everything fixed and and. and Made as beautiful as it could be. No, not quite, but I'd need a lot more time to do that. And I, and I will do another video where I fix even more stuff and make things look better. Also, I should probably, in a video where I, it was all about fixing stuff and making it look nice, I shouldn't be leaving off with a destroyed nether hub. I reckon I'll just get rid of all this. The portal can stay. I don't really mind that being there. In fact, we, we should disable it though, just in case. I don't want anything going through or trying to connect and going near the ward and, you know, all that stuff. So. We'll just break it. And yeah, there's other stuff that I could have fixed, like the teleporter. My aquarium needs finishing still. But say, I, I just don't really have time. We spent way too long getting the beacons, getting all the bosses caught. Like, we did so much in one episode, really, didn't we? When you consider that last time it took me 500 days to build my end hub, I think it's understandable that within 100 days, I wasn't able to completely fix it in time. So I'll get the repairs down in here that need to be done. It's just literally those couple of slabs here. And then I need to go into my ender chest, grab my flint and steel, light that up. And the nether hub is fixed as well. Well, we fixed another thing. We may have broken it, but we also fixed it. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure to go and check out the posters at sp737.store. I've signed them all. And if you'd like to see a video where I built a farm to get all of these infinite notch apples, then click the video that is on screen right now. And I'll start preparing the next project for the next video.